Uh, welcome to you guys for Zooming. I can't, oh, we're just now welcome. Uh, uh, my name is and I think you're, you're taking a really good Zoom. What do you think? You might want to come in person? Ah, just a suggestion. Don't, don't. He said, hold me like three blocks. I, I understand. I understand. We don't want to find so just come on the plan. Uh, this year we have the national voting campaign, and I think if we look at our group, we are all managing our uh, we can use our talents to bring the synergy that makes this club one of the best clubs in our communities. That's what I hope. Uh, I want to thank two people, our newest members, Sam and Valerie, uh, for taking, uh, being great readers. Sam, go get some food, wait uh, And thank you again, guys. Um, would you do the full read And what I'd like to do is take one of the, one of them, and then give them an example. How it affects you is about, okay? I've done reverse, so you just mm -hmm. off the top. That's okay. The four way test of the things you think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? I can think here, uh, is it the truth? I mean, that's if it's false, uh, well, that's what it doesn't matter. So, how do you determine the truth? You can tell you about the value, and you know, this is a point of view, and uh, for another scientific truth is one thing, and it's a lot of scientific truth. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back more back. All right, thank you, Ron, very much. Thank you, Ron. And the Pledge of Allegiance will be uh, given to us by Bill Warren. Everybody take your hats off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. One nation, one God, in this world, with liberty and others for all. Now, the dog today, Jim Cranston. Right. I'm going to do share again today with one of the uh, prayers that have been given in the past of the uh, Myron Taylor. And uh, this particular uh, short prayer includes uh, the fact that uh, each of us had the opportunity of being here of uh, having these uh, peace of the world uh, and we know there's a couple of wars going on, and of course, the people are so much better. The other thing that's kind of interesting in this particular prayer was uh, that he made um, was the fact that he, you know, he had a certain uh, for self. I think it's even in our approach today how uh, she uh, also works with all of these uh, students. Uh, and at the same time, happens. Uh, she needs to go uh, to So let's uh, let's talk about our history. Great God of us all, we thank you for the beauty uh, that surrounds us and the warm fellowship we enjoy with each other. In the midst of life's pressures and tensions, frustrations, we thank you that it is possible to know peace and tranquility and inner strength. Save us 
from the erosion of our faith, which can be like raw and tough and empty. Help us to always be mindful of others, their needs, their purpose, their possibilities. Lead us in today to a solid, stable kind of life and face the demand of each day, unafraid. And you're great, and you pray. Amen. 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 For our newer members and guests, uh, Myron Hill was a member of this club for what, about 40 years? Long, something like that. Passed away. Okay. okay, well, for you too. Okay, thank you. Okay, did you know that? Say, okay, yeah. you got it. The history alive. Now we're doing it. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for that. And thank you, Jim. That was a really nice talk to you. Uh, Pat, President Ed Ball. Now, you know what's so great? It's a short song. <laughs> I don't even know the words. Can we stand for the song? It's very short. I am the and my hat collection of 14,222 hats for you to see our best ball cap. I wonder why. But I think about the UCLA cap. So, I would
So do we have any other guests that I have any Bob Sarn, you're still a guest. So this is becoming a full still a picture of the chairman. This is becoming a rotary club of color. Okay. I assume probably the uh was that uh Al over the bit so I can we can all bring it on screen. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do when I'm laid up, uh, I'm going to have a search of the source of data yesterday, on Saturday morning. I'm going to put together a calendar of events for everybody. Uh, Steve, we did it last year. I'm going to put it together so I don't have all three. So let's just go over the events. I am not sure that I can give this district reference, but I can and will be. It's August 17th. It's at the city club, and uh, we will book a day for everybody registered for the event. But we want to book a like last week. We watch the video and sign up. It costs $10 to register. And if you want, you fill it out, you put it forward and submit it to Terrible. You can see it will be uh, offered on uh, the charges. There it is. Uh, you know what? I think if I can go to the 24th, we could have a blast. We get that seaside splash and dash. Uh, Chris, it's almost reminding me of when we were at the district conference and we had our chili and mar margaritas. That's something similar to that. Uh, but I said it, I cannot do it. Stop singing. And my advantage is they all blink up. So I, but, uh, Let's assume we're not going to be involved. We want to just have a picnic. It might be fun for us. How many people would be willing to go on that Saturday, the 24th, down to the John Lee Treasury Games? One, two, three, or four. Uh, Jim, you're Maybe. Uh, anybody else in the meeting? Okay, okay. So we can have between four, eight, and ten people. So much. I don't get to know, know how I'm going to do it. I am shooting one out of these. What? Okay. No, I don't know what you're doing. I think that would be fun to do a little chair and have a push. Not in the water. Now, what we're going to do about the gala, um, I did not sign up, but everybody, please sign up for the gala. And those of you who have season tickets to something, let's put together a package that's worth it. Okay, now you guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to catch you. Mm -hmm. I think we have some tickets. We do have some. Yeah, but if anybody wants to contribute anything you sell aid to this basket, bring it to a meeting and I'll get it in. How about you? We do that. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to give you some tickets, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was thinking, since you were talking about tickets, maybe we can do a social Yeah. 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 Oh, it was the heart concert yeah. and last year that we no, no, no. Think, and it can be built for nine miles around SoFi from Redondo Beach all the way. And not around Eaglewood, Berkeley, but West Chester, El Segundo, Playa del Rey, Redondo. She's not. Oh. I, 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 so let's and you're asking what you're going on. It's our foundation, it's a foundation gala. Instead of having an evening, instead of having an evening, it's going to be an afternoon picnic in the infield. Yes. Well, I'm happy to accept that. I've got some interject stuff with that foundation. Please come on. Please come on. Oh, okay. This is your time. Oh, okay. Now I'm here at the foundation, Jerry. Okay, no, I'm going to go to the foundation. 
Anyway, as every year, we're going to be uh, purchasing raffle tickets uh, to benefit the foundation, the Rotary Foundation. So I don't, I have now that I'm back from our trip, I'm going to focus on that and start getting the list together and ask each one of us who purchased tickets in the past and don't have a habit to purchase your $100 raffle ticket, book, be it 12 tickets. Bill, I think you won last year, didn't you? Well, congratulations. You lost it. 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 For those of you who have listed to SoFi Stadium, which is one that Marsh and I have been to a food store event, we saw, we saw, um, our president, all of them are so wonderful. But the tour, it was a tour I did that day for the whole stadium. It was awesome. Do we have the whole stadium? Well, I don't know how that is. That's not bad. I doubt we're not old. I think we're going to just have a little bit of the tasting area, a couple of stores. I don't even know all of them. There's just plenty of them. Okay. Well, we'll give you the information we have. Anybody else have any questions about the announcements? Or anybody else have any questions? Marsh, do you have an announcement about peace? Anything? She's, she's far. Okay. She's far. Yeah. Yeah. She's far. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, God. The program and Bill Seppo. Oh. We are so fortunate that we have great coaches from UCLA that I've known and she has done such a wonderful job. And I love her a lot, and I think you'll all enjoy listening to her because she knows everything that I know about sports here. <laughs> Corey Close. Um, I know, I won't say everything I know. Sure. <laughs> I'll try to do it. You know, it's, uh, I think it's been uh, about 12 years since I visited you all. Um, at that time, I think you were meeting over at the Coffee Club, and that's correct. Yeah. Hey! 10 years? It was my year. Oh, there you go. 10 years. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So, um, I, uh, it, I think it's, it makes me feel a little old, but um, I always, and I may have said this before, but it has not changed, is um, I always am reminded and I get more from sharing with you all than I do. Because um, you all, just like going over your creeds and your mission as an organization and uh, service before self, uh, one of our three core values um, is being lifestyle givers. And people of gratitude is our, uh, our second one, and the growth mindset is our third. But I just think you all set the tone for that. And thank you for being an organization that role models for our, our student athletes about what does it mean uh, to more meaningful to give than to receive. I did have the most incredible privilege of being mentored by John Wooden for 15 years and was it was just one of my greatest honors to be able to just literally sit at his feet and learn and be a sponge and ask questions on, on a consistent basis. I will say that if I, my mom had spelled my name Corey, I would have uh, differently. I never would have gotten in. I went to, I remember, I'll never forget, it was 1994, and I went to his apartment up in the casino with Steve Lab, who was the other coach at the time, and we walked up, it was me and five uh, men's coaches. And he looked around the corner down the hallway and said, who are you? And I was like, I was already so nervous, I was sweating. And he, I said, Corey, and I had like 10 syllables because I could barely speak. And he said, how do you spell that? And I said, C-O-R-I? And he goes, you come right with me. 
And he takes me in, and right outside of his the legendary den, he had a little bench and said C O R I. And he said, You're the first person I've ever met that spells it like my great granddaughter, Corey. Uh -huh. And uh, to this day, his great granddaughter and I are friends, and she's a teacher and out in the Inland Empire. And um, so I tell my mom, Thank goodness you uh, named me or spelled it correctly, otherwise, I would have been in big trouble. <laughs> um, and I want to be, I, how much time, but 20 minutes, or I want to make sure I go for anyone, number one, and then uh, over my time, number two. So, for it, we have 20 minutes, and then we'll have a question. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, a lot, this is an understatement, a lot of things have changed in college sports since I was with you 10 years ago. A lot. <laughs> we have added possible attendance since I was with you last. Uh, that means that that amount, there's a difference, there's a gap between what it costs to go to UCLA or any Division One institution, and then there's an actual cost. And now we are able to pay our student athletes that difference. So that is cost of attendance. We have added the Alston case. Uh, that means you can reward um, student athletes academically for academic performance. And so that is that you can get up to $5,900 a year um, for the Alston case. We can now allow players to be paid for their name, image, and likeness. You've heard a lot about that. That started with our very own Ed O'Bannon um, many, many years ago and continued on. And, and we can argue pluses and minuses. But I actually think that particular part, if, staying, if it had stayed the way it was intended, probably should have been done a long time ago. Um, where it's gone after that, that's, that's not everyone's fault. That's a bunch of other people's fault. But we can now pay them to play. I mean, bottom line, we can pay them to play for retention or recruiting. Arnold was just asking me if I had a, a, a choice for a donation, um, where would I put it? And the reality is, is that I would put it with NIL because that is how get and retain recruits. It really doesn't matter if I like it, agree with it. It's the landscape in which I've been asked to operate in, so it's my job to lead towards excellence to that end. And if you're about to pay college athletes, just like pros, through the Hall 7 starting in September of 2025, and it's a lot of money. Now, I don't know, I don't know. But the one thing I do know is that there's been a lot of change. A lot of change. But, and I really feel actually, I really feel for our donors and our administration. Uh, donor fatigue is real. We are pulling at our supporters from every angle. It's tough. And our administration to lead through this incredibly ever changing time is very, very, I'm not sure there's ever been a more difficult time. But, and this is where I want to make But a few things still haven't changed that are really worth noting. The average Division I basketball player spends over 3,500 hours in their sport over four years, and only 4% of those hours are engaged. So the amount of learning and life-changing experiences that are happening through being involved in sport, the 96% really matters. 94% of C-suite leaders that are women consider themselves athletes. 54% of those C-suite um, leaders that hold those positions as women play college sports. College sports is one of our best training grounds for leadership. UCLA Women's Basketball has won the Community Service Award for the past three years in a row. We are Our mission continues to be to be an elite basketball program that teaches, mentors, and equips young women for life after UCLA. We want everyone in our program to have an uncommon transformational experience, not transactional, transformational. That's what Coach Moody really thought of. We want to teach, mentor, and equip our women and all student athletes for after the ball goes flat. Right? When playing careers are over, we want them to look back and go, there's nowhere I could have gone like UCLA that teaches, mentors, and equips me for after the ball goes flat. But, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just, Coach Wooden used to tell me that I wasn't coaching people's jump shots, I was coaching people's hearts. Wow. Deep, right? And after it. 
And then with his big blue eyes and usually a little wink, he would always also say that if you coach their hearts usually really well, their jump shots are pretty good too. <laughs> He's right. You have, we have never needed you as a community more than we need you now. Obviously, we do need your generosity. I refer to that. But we need you to watch our teams on TV so our ratings are through the roof. We need you to show up at games and eat butts in the seats. We need you to specifically invest in women's sports so that we can be an asset um, to refine and to add to the arms of our income source, to grow the pie. So much of the time when we talk about supporting women's sports in the past, it has been check the box of Title IX, make sure there's equity. Well, those days are over, y'all. Look around at what's happening with women's basketball. They are an asset, a good business decision that is worth investing in. We need that kind of support so that can come out and we can do that for UCLA. But here's the deal. None of that will ever keep us from coaching these young women's hearts. We had um, a 3.4 team GPA last year with the players that the university would have said won't be able to make it. We um, have been supporting Yuri for seven years and last month, Cam, that's a meter for the first time. Let me tell you about Yuri. So every month, we take bottles and cans, and um, people bring their bottles and cans, and we recycle those and, get, and redeem the money from that. And we've been paying for Yuri to be in an orphanage in, that, in Baja, Mexico, for seven years. She's now at a girl's home in Tijuana. And our money, recycling, pays for her to be there. And 90% of the kids that are in the orphanage have been rescued from abusive situations, and most of the girls at the girls' home have been rescued from sex trafficking. But imagine, imagine, we go, we drive down there, there's nine women's basketball players in the cars, and we drive down to Tijuana, and we go, um, we show up at this girls' home, and Lindsay Cassaro gets out of the van, and Yuri, when she was younger, runs over and says, you club, you club, he said, he said, like, sponsor, sponsor. And she grabs her hand because we also write to her once a month. And right takes us to her little bungalow where there's eight girls and a, a house mom. And she takes her in and says, sponsor, sponsor, and then points to the wall. And every one of the letters we were written were up on her wall. We have the privilege of affecting Yuri's life, but guess what? Our hearts were changed and enlarged too. Just last, um, just two weeks ago, we went down to the girls' home in Tijuana. Now Yuri is 15 years old, and we get a chance to spend time with her. And he, all of our players bring on a Google translator, and they're going back and forth, and they spend the whole day. And they said, What can we do for you? And um, they said, we want to be able to watch your games. And we want to be able to know when you guys write us all the time. And we want to be able to see you do your thing. And uh, so we, on the 24th of August, we're going down there again. And we're going to get two computers so that they can use them for multiple functions, as well as work out the VPN and all those things. And so we're going to put it all up for them so they're going to be able to watch our games um, because of those relationships. Yes. They're going to enjoy watching our games. But guess what? That's about coaching our players' hearts. We spend uh, time at the family floor um, on the Elgin Dream Center, where every single one of the families are transitioning either from difficult, abusive situations or transitioning from homelessness. And I was having my new year meetings last year, and Kiki Wright, one of our star players, I mean, she she makes more money than me throughout NIL. She's something, she's famous, she's got all those things, and I asked her what her most meaningful. Um, thing was from last year, and she says, spending the month of time on the family floor at the Dream Center. It changed her heart. It changed her heart. We had some great times with Salvation Army. Um, we I would adopt families, and we've been able to spend time with buy Christmas presents there through the years. We haven't done that in a couple of years, but what a privilege to do so. And all of these things. But then you, you talk about basketball. And it's sort of like that link that Coach Wood gave me. He said, because if you coach our hearts really well, the jump shots end up pretty good too. So, oh yeah, we have a preseason top five team ranked team in the country this year, and we have our eyes set on habits and processes that will lead us to a Big Ten, 
weird to say that, right? Big Ten and National Championship. That is our goal. But what I want to share with you the most is about you will never stop listening to coach and never stop coaching people's hearts. We have the most talented team I've had in my 31 year career. Balanced, versatile, depth, size, etc. But you know what? There's only two things that are going to stay with them for the rest of their lives for these four years. Even if we cut down nets, those hanging open cases. When I was, I think it was my, maybe my fourth year, um, we had a director of mental conditioning, Joshua Medcalf, who's written several books, um, and she just came out with another one, Chocolate with Gary Water, a bunch of different ones that have been pretty well used through the years. And he took our whole team out of the court. And he said, what are the two things that are going to stay with you for the rest of your life from these four years? And at that point, Jordan Canada, who's in the net, and WNBA now, said, I want a banner, baby. I want a banner out of the I want to raise that up. And he said, I can't wait to support you to do that. I can't wait to see your habits lead you to that place. But not only is that a byproduct of other process choices, banners and agents. And then Kelly, um, Kelly Hayes, who's marrying um, soon a men's basketball player, um, and Isaac Hamilton, and she said, I want that ring, baby. I want that ring. And he said, man, I will, I will be there sharing with you with that ring ceremony. And he said, I can't wait to see how you grow as a young woman that leads you to being able to obtain that ring. But rings collect us and sit in trophy cases. The only two things that stay with you for the rest of your life from these four years, even if you cut down next this year, is who you become and who you impact. Who you become and who you impact. Okay. I said, when I got here, I sent 12 letters to women's basketball alumni through the years, and I sent 12 letters to men's basketball alumni through the years, and I asked them the same questions. I asked them, what do you wish UCLA provided for you that they didn't? What would you want to see from your programs to be able to be proud that you're doing what maybe wasn't done for you, but you're doing moving forward? And they gave you some very specific things that we do to this day. Number one was financial literacy courses and understanding how we handle money. That was before and I know all the other things I just listed. But they said that's why almost 90% of um of uh, NBA players are bankrupt within five years because they don't know how to handle that. So we implemented the programs to be doing that. They talked about the mental health and how important that was and um so, and how especially in the black community where uh, over 70% of the um men's basketball players across the country are black, that we have to work to overcome a stereotype and you only go to deal with your mental health with your weak. And we have now, I would say, of more than half the players on both teams are, are intentionally pursuing mental health and wondering how they can work through some things that have been tough. The list goes on, but not one of them in any responses I received from any of the 12 men or any of the 12 women had anything to do with raising banners or getting rooms. They were a byproduct. Those were byproducts. That's what Coach Wynn always talked about. Is that you can teach those young men about habits and how to put your shoes and socks on in the same way. And I, by the way, that wasn't about just blisters. I used to think that. I used to think, I'm like, that's a nice story. Um, how cute that they had such terrible shoes that Coach Wynn had to teach them how to put their shoes and socks on in the same way. But then I had Brady Johnson, and I'm sort of going on a tangent, but I have more minutes, so I'm going to do it. Um, but I had Mr. Johnson come in and teach our players how to put their shoes and socks on the same way Coach Wooden taught him. And, you know, the great was amazing in a strong but gentle way. He walked them through all of that. And he talked about the wrinkles and talked about how to put them on and what's really important. And he gently but methodically walked through the whole thing. And through there, you see these nuggets like, um, you know, I was a track guy playing basketball among all these all Americans and actually I was really insecure. And he was, oh, we got all these guys from all over the country. Different social economics, different religions, different geographies, all these different rocks of life. And then he just kept telling them how to put the shoes and socks on this thing. And I just thought, oh, isn't this cute? And tell him that's the end. And then he just gently stood up and he said, it didn't matter that I was from 
this urban area and really didn't, um, you know, hadn't been um, spent from a poor area, really rural, and it didn't matter if someone else came from New York, it didn't matter if somebody else was black or white or a different religion, it didn't matter. We were really able to see them because we all start by putting our socks and shoes on the same way. Ah, oh, it really wasn't about avoiding blisters. <laughs> it was about providing a baseline for the enemy. That it didn't matter. It didn't matter about um, the big things. It didn't matter where we were from. It mattered that we all started with putting our shoes and socks on the same way, and we knit together our hearts to become a great team. That's what we're trying to do. We used to play women's basketball. Yeah, well, not, you're not going to meet anyone any more competitive than me. Do I want to win the national championship in the worst possible way? Yes, I do. So hopefully, you're going to see us study down next this year. But I hope, I hope you will be able to smile, knowing that you coach people's hearts, as well as help them become the kind of people they want to become and impact the people that they want to impact. And you want to put a lot of games in the process. So we are we are perfect, and there's ups and downs, and there's a lot of um, trepidation. And I want to be honest with you, it's made me the last the, all those changes I said at the beginning have made me question how much longer I can do this. If I'm being really candid, it's very difficult. It's like adding all these full time jobs, and it's really it's really really playing with the purpose of all of that that I deeply believe in. But you know what? I don't have to let it change me. I don't have to let it. Yes, maybe I need to adapt as a leader. Um, I definitely uh, have an entrepreneurial spirit, and so I have to think differently from a business mindset. I have to prepare differently. I have to raise money differently. I have to allocate time differently. But I don't have to have it change that my real obligation is to coach and transform and enlarge people's hearts. So that was the chance to do. So I'll stop there and I'll answer your questions. How about that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I recall a question asked in front of you. And the question was um, what does the state win an extra championship? He says, we win with the best players. Okay. So how do you, as a coach, attract to get the best players to come to UCLA? No, no. Well, that, that's changed a little bit recently. I, that is one of the things I think Coach wouldn't quit. I didn't know he didn't have an IL, that it was so healthy. He had to attract players so differently. But um, one is I have to have um, a fair amount of media and likeness money to offer. That's just a part of our business now. That's where we are. And but as we speak right now, they are having a business meeting with Westcom as we speak about um, uh, a group licensing deal they're doing that. So we're like pretty official, we're gonna turn it off its head. And most people receive their main image and likeness from about 80 to 90 percent from a collective. So a collective is pretty much mostly paper play. You come to my school, I'm gonna give you X amount of dollars. Um, what we have done is 80% of our money is through either service, like what I just talked about on some of our um, things that we've done in Mexico, or group licensing deals, which or like what we're doing with Westcom. As we speak right now, our players are meeting with their executives on a deal they want to do with the entire team. So, unfortunately, maybe we like this is a piece of that, but we have to have that arm in place. Um, we have to, I, I really believe we use our culture. I think we have a very unique, we can say uncommon culture that um, I try to say, you don't want to miss out on this. You don't want to miss out on this. And I think we um, have been able to be pretty successful of being doing it differently. There's not many people in the country that are doing it like we have. And one of the best NIL deals that I can possibly offer families is a little time work. The way that, and I'm not just talking about money and jobs, I'm talking about wisdom. The very first thing that from Charlie's, um, that came Charlie's Ledger Walker from Washington State, and she came um, to uh, us this year, and I said, how do you want to grow this year? We only have nine months with you, how do you want to grow? She said, I want to grow in the areas of finance. 
And so I set her up literally her second day on the job with Michael Price, who is um, was one of the three people to reopen the stock exchange after 9-11. He's been very successful financially, yeah. and he's meeting with her every other week. This whole year, mentoring her in the way of finance. The price tag on them. I mean, it's incredible. So we really try to create an uncommon transformational experience that we say don't get, get anywhere else. Um, and bottom line is Los Angeles does a very good. Um, it's the opportunity. We always say you can make a big place smaller and make it a family atmosphere. It's really hard to make a big place a uh, small place bigger, and to have all the opportunities that we have. Um, you know, we, this is the most powerful team we've had this year, and so, um, but I do think it's about really, it's about we can care for you as a person first, as a student second, and as an athlete third, and I think we don't just say that, we try to give very clear examples of how we did that, and I think that has been something that's been really beneficial to us in recruiting. Yes? Taking that on you're competing with the Florida State, or, uh, my own title? Huh? Or one of the other ones, yeah. yeah, or even FC, right? Uh, both of us top five this year. So, how do you do that? They can roll more money, yeah. No, their, their profit table right now is over two million dollars a year for their players right now. What is it? Uh, a lot less than that, okay. Probably, you know, so a lot less, <clears throat> okay. So, because you're a public school. You want to do so much. Yeah, no, 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 we, we haven't been able to build that to that level yet. So, so what, what, what for me do to help? Well, I really, it is really big. We have a goal last year, we have the first sellout since 1978. And our goal this year is to have three sellouts. We have defending national champions, um, South Carolina coming to our building. And I'm going to give everybody here two tickets on me for the first one to come. But my biggest thing you can do is come. Um, it really means a lot. And honestly, like for instance, it just came out two days ago that for the men for years, um, we participated in the NCAA tournament as a unit distribution. So there's an amount of money. So the further those teams go in the NCAA tournament, there's a financial reward back to the institution. That's never been in place until this next year for women. So when you watch it on television and you support from a media rights perspective, that actually really helps us build because there's it's about $171 million pay, um, dollar payout. Ours is 25 million. I'm thrilled to start. But when you really support and just watch the games, you contribute to that popularity. Look what's happened with the Caitlin Clark effect. As we um, talk about it, we actually have a, we're hoping to have a, um, we can you guys see the series of Welcome to Wrexham. Um, we that exact company may be doing the UCLA effect and following our team over the next two years. Um, if that takes place, watch it. Help us with that. Because honestly, it helps our players build their brand and it all feeds itself back. Um, you know, obviously, there's a need for generosity, um, but I never want to give you that because there are so many other things that have to do with just showing up and investing in the right places. Um, you know, follow our players on social media, help them build their brands. There's a lot of non-financial ways you can really make a difference as well. So, you have my business card. Okay. Send me periodically what it is you want us to watch. I'll put it out to our Perfect. Show. And I, I don't want you to be once over 10 years, okay? No. no, no. All right. All right. All right. I actually want you to be part of this. Okay. Uh, well, I'll consider that. I'm right now. Okay. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I I yes. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, <laughs> me too, a lot of the time. <laughs> well, no, but you know, we're talking about college athletes. And, and okay. okay. Sure. Uh, introducing pay and you can pay these people, uh, players. So, in five years, what is one of the top players uh, anticipated to get paid? And when did this end? And they're, they're now considered the employees. Yeah, well, that, I'll be honest with you. If you go to the employee model, I will quit. Uh, it's, it's not a sustainable deal, but. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. We're doing everything we can to not have a big more hard to say, oh, 20,000 a year. Yeah. I know. 
that's a bad model, I think. If, uh, you're, you're not completely disagree with me. Here's the thing, here's the real reality of it. We're, we're hoping the reason the house settlement passed is that, um, and there's still some details to work out on this, they're trying to cripple the collectors from having all the power. The, the collectors are this third party entities. Our collectors are, is called the Men of Westwood and Champion of Westwood. And, but ours is nothing compared to most places. And that they are, it's dirty, right? And then there's no accountability for it. So let's say you say to some five-star recruit, men's women doesn't matter. I'm gonna pay you X amount of dollars when you come here. There's nothing to sign. And then all of a sudden it happened to Texas A&M. Texas A&M football spent 21 million to get the number one football recruiting class in the country. And they didn't perform very well. So those donors that said, I'll pay this, I'll put that money in, they're like, okay, Matt, he's not performing. <laughs> and there's no structure or accountability to not, not have it. So they're hoping the reason the settlement happened is they, as a part of the settlement, they're getting a percentage of the media rights. So a percentage of the media rights are going to school. What they're trying to do is say, okay, that's your paper play money. Everybody knows it is going to explode. There's an accountability structure, you move it under the umbrella of, of your institution, and then we're going to disallow what the collectors have been doing. Now, everyone's wondering how they're going to hold that accountable, but that is the goal. So that we won't be having third party organizations controlling the recruiting of 18 to 22 year old kids. Chris, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your experiences with Caitlin Clark. Uh, I did. I did. I didn't get a chance to coach Caitlin Clark for two years in the summer. She has something you cannot teach. She has a moxie about her. She has a, uh, but she also has a tenderness about her whole family. I actually was coaching uh, the U19 World Cup team in Spain and Hungary, and my dad passed away while I was on the trip. And probably nobody was sweeter to me. Uh, Lauren Betts is on our team now. And Caitlin Clark really were very, very kind souls. So as much as the persona, and she does, she has a lot of moxie, she's gonna talk a lot of trash, but she also has to back it up, right? And so, but she also has a tender side, um, and that was really fun. But I remember, um, I, I still joke with her all the time about this. When I was coaching the World Cup in um, Thailand, she was the youngest one on the team, she didn't play very much. And we said, look, um, you are a good, good free throw shooter, so if you get into a situation where there's an intentional foul late in the game, be ready, we're coming to you. Well, that happened. And actually, when it was against uh, Australia, we were trying to foul and stop the clock, and we ended up being an intentional foul by somebody who eventually came to UCLA, and is the MC, um, just graduated. But she um, had threw an elbow, um, trying to not dirty, but just to avoid the foul. And um, we called on Caitlin Clark and to make the free throws, and she only made one out of two. And so we had to go make the one more out of bounds play to send it to overtime to eventually won. Well, every time um, you know she gets some big award, uh, I just text her and say, "Well, it's about time you learn how to shoot a free throw." So, <laughs> I can't keep her humble a little bit, but she, she's uh, a remarkable player. And uh, you know what she has done in broadening the light. I think we were talking about it earlier um, uh, on women's sports and women's basketball has been remarkable. The product has been really good for a long time, and we just didn't have the exposure for everybody to know about it. And Caitlin Clark has brought us that. Yes. What about what it's going to be like to be in the pen now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was super on uh, basketball, not very hard. Um, I had four cross country trips in a row, non conference last year. Um, we won all of them. We traveled really well. I don't think for the men's or the basketball and football, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Now, for soccer and softball and some of the Olympic sports, I'm not, I, I can't answer that question, but I can say um, our, our athletic department has done a really good job preparing for this. We, tra we travel with the learning specialists, we travel with tutors, uh, we make sure that we're um, being proactive and how we prepare for class. And, you know, we are um, doing our very best academically with a team that the university would say, there's no way, like I mentioned earlier. So. Uh, I'm not worried about us, but I can't speak for the challenges that's going to happen for some of the Olympic sports yet. So, yes. Um, back to Katie Clark. Okay. As good as you've heard, Yeah. 
I've never seen a uh, better pastor. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And she makes everybody better. Yeah. Her vision is everyone, I'm, I got interviewed several times this year <laughs> about her. And everyone, of course, wants to talk about her logo threes and she can shoot it from anywhere. And it was very controversial that she didn't make the Olympic team. I thought she handled that with great class. But I think her own skill is her vision and her passion. Yeah. And I agree with you. So, yeah, because you can see. It's the point guard that controls the whole tempo of the game. Agreed. And Laura Betts was on our team, six eight of the three by the way. She's like, he's darn hard, don't give me the ball on that. So it's six eight. So yeah, I agree. So how do you pass that on to your own point? Yeah. That you know, you keep the court different. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's the hard part. Um, is that I will point guard actually also. Um my only two records, um, in the NCA are assists in the NCA tournament game and consecutive free throws. So I have valued those things a lot. But it is a very hard vision and feel is a very hard skill to teach. And so you can make incremental steps, but as much as I think her um, college coach that I did a spectacular job with Caitlin, she came there with that skill and with that vision and that understanding of the game and that anticipatory way to be able to see the space that the ball needs to go to before any, anyone runs onto it. So um, I do think there are you can make incremental steps, but I think that is a real gift um, to have that in the vision. Yes, Follow up on the championship game with South Carolina. He I was pleasantly surprised to hear what the coach had to say about Peter Clark. Yeah, that was beauty. What were your thoughts? No, I thought that was great. She deserved to be acknowledged in that way. And I thought it was a class I'm going to fight on daily to be able to say what a generational talent and how impactful Caitlin Clark has been on the game. And I think that's one of the things that women's coaches really understand is that. Um, it's not just about our own institutions. It's about taking off our institutional hats and growing the game together. And I thought that was a great example of that. Yes. Laura, you know, thank you oh. for your presentation today. I think it's beautiful the way that you're talking about all the effort that you are putting into the program so that, uh, you know, like you're teaching something else mm -hmm. that's like basketball mm -hmm. and that they can carry that. I'm wondering if that is like, something that you have come up with yourself like uh on your own or is is that like a vision UCLA has do you have or do you like do you have a team that is also with you like yes yeah, really mm -hmm. yeah I've been part of this um I've got this is my first time coaching job here I was an assistant for 18 years and I uh, became the head coach here 13 years ago, and I got a lot of things wrong. I made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I got right is I hired a great staff, and they are smarter than me and better than me, and they're phenomenal. Um, I really, really appreciate them. But, you know, really the way that I come up with my philosophy is that my heart was changed by being involved in sports and athletics. And my dad was a coach. Um, I had a phenomenal coach. His big thing was Habits of Excellence based on the book by Covey, right? Um, you are what you repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. And so that was what I heard over and over again as a college athlete. And then I got to be mentored by Coach Sean Wooden, who really could care less about the 10 national championships as much as he um, truly, truly values the investment that he made in the young men and coaching their hearts. So I'm really, I'm a product of people pouring into me, and then I have the privilege of paying forward. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, in practice, how often do the women practice against men, and who are the men? Every day, we practice against the men every single day. And who are they? Most of the time, like well, probably our best guy who's been with us for four years, he um, came as a scholarship athlete to the football team. But Johnny is the same, and he. Um, ended up deciding not to play football anymore and came over to be a scout. Most of them played varsity boys basketball in high school, but weren't quite good enough to be Division One athletes. And then they joined our scout team, and we have a group of I think 13 guys, and they were, we have eight guys in our practices every single day, and we play against them constantly. Okay, that's interesting. I want to put all these questions out there. So I'm a decently involved with Gloria in the program. I don't see the big thing. my fault. And you know, so I, I don't really see other programs, but I hear what happens to other programs. And a lot of the factories where Corey 
featured as the Dakis Center and found the picture of the home for the players and just home away from the children. Children and angels with these women are like you know, those from I remember I think it was from Canada. You could get her to the highest of us when she came into the person. Yeah. Right? And three, four years later, when she was a senior, she was just an extremely engaging person. Amazing. So you become a new to the mess. Well, I have time, but um, thank you all so much for having me. By the way, uh, for this was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And as I said before, not a change, not a whole. Okay, I'll come again. This is on this. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure to meet you. Great. You want to come over here? Picture is on. Really good. Yeah, well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Au revoir. So we had a press release on Tuesday to uh, to tell people that we had uh, completed our Series B financing for thirty million, and sure. had okay. done a, a collaboration with the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation that also invested in part of that. Well, he didn't know what he's saying is he's pretty much good. No, no, no pretty good. Sure. You just keep working. Yes. Yeah. We, we get to do our phase one study with our, our cancer drug. Oh, cool. I, yeah. This drug can find a way to get cancer on it. It's in pancreatic cancer as well. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. We have more from drug status from the FDA in pancreatic cancer and multiple myeloma. The, wow. the foundation support is as important as the fundraising round. Yeah. They, they, yeah. That's really important. Okay, thank you for your generous contribution uh, to the foundation. Uh, Chris, we don't have the time for a joke. Unfortunately. We ought to do that. So, uh, because I promised here that at one thirty from now on, this meeting is over. Yes. Uh, so we have 30 seconds, but I'm going to call it the general. Uh, Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>